Uh, his name was Slinky. Slinky, you say? Yes. What an interesting batch of friends you have. No, he's he's he's, he's an indie he's an indie referee, and guess what his gimmick is? He carries a slinky down the ringside with him. I'm going to guess that his gimmick also includes crickets in the background when he comes out. <laughs> Twelve rounds on Friday. I'll need twelve rounds of Starbucks to watch that thingy. Promotional consideration paid for by the following. Believe it or not, kids, this radio's program is sponsored, sponsored by our good friends at TonyAtlas'sChicken.com. How did you know it was chicken inside? Then he started rambling. He was like... Well, I can't have none of my chicken. Did you ask for some of his chicken? No, because he already said, that you guys can't have none of my chicken. I think I got some of that on video, actually. I'll have to post that on YouTube. Promotional consideration paid for by the following. We do have another sponsor, and that would be... He's the one that said you couldn't have his chicken! Dot com. Hello, everyone. This is your Action News reporter with all the news that is news across the nation on the scene at the supermarket. There seems to have been some disturbance here. Pardon me, sir. Did you see what happened? Yeah, I did. I was standing over by the tomatoes, and here he comes. Well, well, well. Happy music. Happy music. I, you signals, know, I'm... signals, but one thing. It's time for a happy segment here on WrestleCrap Radio. Well, it's usually happy. But I'm all kinds of pissed off this week. Hardy's trip to the grocery. I didn't go to the grocery this week. Went went to Taco Bell this week. They took away the spicy chicken burrito. It's a, it's a tragic moments like this that make me glad that I haven't had fast food in over three months. Well, well. WrestleCrap Radio. I doing not, Dale. Oh, I'm doing good, JR, huh. but I, I must not be doing as good as you. What the hell that supposed to mean? Well, we were just, we were talking about how I read your blog, and it said you're selling lots of nuts, so, I mean, business must be booming, selling lots of nuts, that's fantastic. Congratulations, Jim. It's said you funny, talking about my nuts. The, no, I would, congratulating you, you you're, you're doing well in the in the business, I guess, right? I guess so. My wife, my wife is actually in charge of the, in charge of the nut division. So that isn't, that isn't something that you oversee. That's the only time she'll ever touch my nuts. I told you I had sex in about 11 months now. It just, it just, it yeah. does, the, the celibacy tour continues for you, huh, Jim? Yeah, like, that's funny, don't you? At this rate. And I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go down and just, you know, inducting Bill Watts into the Hall of Fame. Right. My only hope is if, uh, maybe, uh, Dark Journey will come out of the woodwork for Bill's induction. Do you think Dark Journey has any interest in JR's nuts? I'd love her to give me them head scissors, Dale. <laughs> yes, we, we, we saw it, the yep. video, Jim. Would you like to... Try to sample my nuts, Dale. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't have interest in your nuts, Jim. How's Mrs. Dale's jaw doing these days? I don't think, I think we should probably, like, probably let you go, Jim. I'm sorry that, that I'm sorry that your wife... Oh, it's my, fuck <laughs> yourself. I'm just trying to have a little fun. Shove this, shove this radio show up your fucking ass. Jim. <laughs> Jim. Jim. <laughs> Time for the question of the week. No longer award winning, no longer prize winning. That's sad. Sadness is uh, also uh, the order of the day for one uh, Eric Majorwitz, who writes, Dear RD and Blade, I am in sort of a pickle and would hope your combined keen insight would help me out. Hmm. Although... In a pickle. Yes, in a pickle. 
How is Eric Majorowitz going to keep breathing if he's stuck inside a pickle? Let's turn it on. We got the ham radio going. It's time for your friend and mine. Uh, TNA news with, with none other than uh, with uh, the TNA correspondent, Mr. Mike Check. Mike, how you doing this evening, buddy? Well, uh, RJ, I am very happy to say I, I'm in a great mood this week. I'm really glad to be back on the airwaves, back on the radio with, with you and Brad. This should be a fantastic time. Uh, I apologize. Yeah. I've had a couple of really rough weeks. It hadn't been hadn't been good. What with the passing of Paul Harvey uh, and everything, I, I'm still wearing a black armband for Paul. Ah, I thought you were gonna say the passing of another one of your gallstones. Uh, no, but uh, yeah, to everything. I went to the doctor recently, and he said that uh, everything looks fine for a man of my. Of my relative uh, relative youth, uh, I uh, should be in really really good shape. But, but no, it's 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 a good week for me. I apologize if I came off as a uh, as a downy clowny the last couple weeks. Uh, Mike, you know it's okay. I mean, we've all had a few bad weeks. I know Blades had it rough. Uh, our buddy Trash is going through a rough time. Even my uh, good friend Jeff Cohen. Uh, he's had a rough, uh, tough stretch too. So it's 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 nothing nothing to get worked up about. We're we're just glad that you're that you're back in in order and everything's good. And look forward to having you on here each and every week. Did you say Jeff Cohen? Yeah, yeah, Jeff Cohen, guy that got me in the wrestling business. Jeff Cohen. Jeff Cohen. You know if this uh, Jeff Cohen ever lived in uh, Fayetteville, Arkansas? I don't believe that. No, I am pretty sure Jeff's lived in Indianapolis his whole life. Well, the reason I ask is uh, I could tell you a little story uh, this week. I was working the uh, Fayetteville market at... uh, KBRS, and there was a uh, there was a Jeff Cohen that worked there. I didn't know if it was the same feller. I guess not, but uh, KBRS, yeah. uh, or as we called it at the time, Briss ninety six. You can what? probably tell that station had something of a something of a Jewish tint to it, and uh, I was there work in the graveyard shift, the overnight drive, that's where you try and try and get people, is there the target demo, I'll try and explain this to you, I don't know if I've ever mentioned target demographics, but uh, in this case it was the uh, truckers that, that drive along on the open highways and we thought it would be good as we were at Briss 96, and of course it had something of a Jewish tint to it. I thought maybe it would be a good idea that if I had a uh, somewhat of a vaguely Jewish persona, we could appeal to any uh, Jewish truck drivers uh, rolling across the country. Okay, um... Thought that would play well and really hit a demographic that's somewhat ignored. Uh, Not a lot of people are trying to appeal to Jewish truck drivers, but uh, decided I would not work as Mike Check, but rather as uh, Barney Goldstein on the the drive. And uh, my partner for that shift was Ezekiel, Ezekiel Miller. And together, we had the uh, Barney Miller Show. Sadly, sadly. Yeah, sadly, you got canceled in the 70s. 
sadly that did not last as uh, the station was uh, sued for copyright infringement. Apparently there was a television show with the same name I was not aware of. I did do a little research on it then and not exactly sure how uh, the radio station would have lost the lawsuit. Uh, the television show that I saw had nothing to do with truck drivers or Jewish Jewish disc jockeys. I don't, uh. I don't know. I guess the station was scared they had lost a similar lawsuit a few years earlier. There were a couple of uh, women DJs, which I'm never in favor of, but they had a couple of women DJs, and they they were both named Mary Hartman. Sweet Fanny Adams. Not sure. I, I think I think they may have both been lesbians. <laughs> they wore their hair in like long pigtails, and it was it was awful. Yeah, congratulations. I want to congratulate you on uh, uh, offending the most amount of people within the shortest amount of time in the history of this radio show. Mike, I'm just going to ask this nicely. Can you just do me a favor? Can you, Instead of telling us about working as, as Jewish truck driving DJ and having some horrible show... Could you just please tell us what you saw on TNA this week? Just tell us what you saw on TNA this week. Is that too much to ask? Well, I will uh, I'll, I'll try and get it back on track. I apologize there, RJ. But uh, I tell you what I did not see. There was a, there was a girl on that show that I had seen for several weeks, and uh, she was conspicuous by her absence. I don't don't know where she was. Uh, it was a girl that came out with uh, some guy named Rude and another guy named Storm. I think her name was uh, Jackie. You know Jackie? Yeah, yeah she was... Uh, you know, if you, uh, she was something else. Oh, yeah. She, uh, she looked kind of like she was, uh, had been ridden hard and put away wet several times, and I'd like to do that, too. Oh, nice. Classy. Hey, I got some sad news for you. She's been sent home, and she's more, uh, more or less been fired from the company. Along, along, along with your bro, your buddy, badass Billy Gunn. That's very sad. I don't know if I'd ever mention I had worked with uh, Billy and I had a friendship. Uh, whenever he was working the Laredo market, he was in a uh, yep. he was in the rodeo. Very yep. sad that uh, he no longer has gainful employment. Sadder still that my girl Jackie is. Uh, now in the soup line as well. Can't do much for you, Jackie, but I can I can play you this song. That's right, Jackie. It's the Ozark Mountain Daredevils here on the Wacker. <laughs> in a burlap sack. Probably too long. <laughs> yeah. Excuse, excuse me, I guess see puberty there. Anytime What's I that? go to a live WWE event, I yeah. always think about, like, uh, the stereotypical wrestling fan and what the world, you know, outside of wrestling thinks of wrestling fans. Yeah. And I always think, my God, it's all true!